they've lost Nate. Oh, there he's back. Yay. Good afternoon, Par R family around the world, Facebook land, YouTube land. How are you? I hope you are super duper well, thriving, flourishing and abundant. And if you are not, we bless you to flourish and come into abundance. And uh, I've got the glory that is Nate Turner. Nate, hi, how are you? I can't hear him. I can't hear you. Oh, we have no sound. We have nothing from you. Oh, all right. You can come back to us. David will help. Oh, he's disappeared completely. Oh, I hope he comes back. Otherwise, it's just you and I, Sarah Jane. And the lovely, anointed, talented wonder that is Sarah Jane Biggert. How are you, Sarah Jane? Fabulous. Thank you, Emma. Yes, wonderful. Yes, back in, uh, back in the island, on the island, uh, practicing the paddle boarding in the hope that we can have a, a paddle uh what's the word challenge next week hopefully when you get here yeah. yes i'm flying up to join some of the senior team are joining sir jane and the island the hebridean island next week and uh but yeah. so you're practicing your paddle boarding were you practicing in swimsuit or wetsuit what was the temperature I, well it was a beautiful beautiful temperature the water is cold though so it was a wetsuit and i'm glad i put it on because i thought i'll have a go at surfing a wave because professional paddle boarders, for those that you are in the know, can actually surf into shore from, from catching the wave as well as do it on the flat. I can do the flat stuff, but if there's any waves, you know, still practicing that. So I was doing real well, and I'm saying to myself, SJ, you've got it. I do pray a lot in tongues when I'm paddle boarding, just to, just to help my legs. <laughs> I do. I do. And then I'm like, I could do this. I could do this. I can catch this wave. And I'm like feeling really good about it. I've caught a little bit of a one and then I think, right, here we go, here we go. And then literally the wave catches the back of the board and over I go into the water like a starfish screaming for the whole beach to hear. <laughs> anyway, yes, much entertainment. Thomas came to my rescue and ran oh, in. <laughs> oh, that's, that's what you need from your sons, you know, come to rescue the mothership. So, so, lovely. You carried the board back for me as well. What a great help. Yeah. Good. Nate, is your sign back on? I think so. Can you yes, just hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> Yay. How are you? Yes. Yes. Great. I have to say, Sarah Jane, paddleboarding is something I want to take on because I feel like in the in the British Isles, it's it's fairly common everywhere I go. I, I and there's water. Typically, you see people doing it all year round. So it's definitely in the books to be done um, one day. Yes. But yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I was just crazy. saying it's. It's great to be back on and back and uh, getting in the role of things. We were gone for several weeks back in America, raising funding and, um, you know, ministering and seeing family and, and just coming back and the lovely quarantine. And um, but, hey, it is a beautiful day today um, and all the kids are away today. So it was nice. It was quiet in the house, which is not very common. <laughs> not very common. Well, I have to say, I've got a linen sundress on and the legs are out. It's a miracle. There's sunshine in Glasgow. God is on the throne indeed. <laughs> I actually have one of my children and she's been out there for two hours in her bikini. Who wears a bikini in Glasgow? In her bikini sunbathing since 10 a.m. So uh, the sun is out. Yes, I know. It's it's remarkable. So I'm going to run out and uh, sit in the sun later on. I'm going to do my work in the sun, my research. In the is that sun. like I used to do revision in the sun when I was a student with my eyes closed a lot, with my books <laughs> in front of me? I'm revising. <laughs> I'm revising. <laughs> No, actually, do you know, I've started to research, but we're not doing it today on bit, on nationalism, holy nationalism, unholy nationalism, unteachable nationalism, Christian nationalism. So I was sitting actually till really late at night last night with my dad and my husband. I have pages of research and notes. What does God say about nationalism and how he loves nations and what he doesn't like about it? So, haha, watch this space whenever I have. So I might just close my eyes in the sun to, to marinate on holy nationalism. God will speak. <laughs> See what comes out. Yes. Yes. Don't push yourself. He absolutely yes. will. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And is, is anybody good at keeping plants? I have become a plant mother. You know this interior design thing that's all the rage where you just fill your house with plants? 
like the house plant, the greener, the better, the more. I don't know whether it's like a save the planet thing, but it's, it's a nice interior design look. And I just, I need somebody to pray for me and release an anointing to be a mother of house plants. Is that, is there such a thing? Because honestly, so I have this spider plant. I have cut more leaves off it because they keep going brown. And I'm uh -oh. like, what am I doing wrong? Maybe it needs more sun. I, mm. Oh, anyway. More sun, less watering. You could be over watering it. It's, it's um, quite dry, actually. Apparently anyway, there's an app now that tells you if your plants needing more sun, more less water. Um, but yes, they, you look like you're growing a Yoda in a plant pot. <laughs> oh, Is it I know. <laughs> I know. Me Megan makes me move them when uh, she does her broadcast. <laughs> Oh, no, I need that grace too, Emma, because um, we have plants out front of our house. And while we were gone, we had a friend taking care of them. And honestly, they bloomed and they were beautiful. We get home, we're home like a week and they're all dead. And we're like, oh, what are we doing? No. That's, that's, so, so your friend was good at them. Your, Sarah Jane had the opposite thing. Do you want to say you left friends in charge of your plants and they all oh. died? The friends were amazing and wonderful and did a great job and they cut the grass and everything, but bless them, the only week they didn't go to the house was the hottest week of the year in Scotland and a lot of the, the plants just fried. Some are coming back to life. Resurrection power is available for some plants. Some of them have had to be uh, put to rest, but anyway. Oh, dear. Um, Alistair, my husband, could, he's a keen gardener. He's good at outdoor plants. If anybody wants to workshop on outdoor plants, he's your man. He's mm -hmm. very good. He does. Per your husband does parade around the garden inspecting his plants regularly, doesn't uh -oh. he? Yeah, we talk about this a lot, but he does absolutely love it. He absolutely yeah. does. He, he, yeah, I don't know what it is. It's just a DNA thing that God's given him that, that gift, but also the desire just to see things grow and plant yeah. them. The first thing he wants to do when he gets here is put plants in the ground. I'm like, can we unpack first? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of you are, t a lot of you, and my, my poor old PA is typing, you probably haven't watered it. They're thirsty. Actually, it is, it is bone dry, to be fair. I'm going to That'll go do a problem. Then. <laughs> Katrina, come to my house and help. Right, okay, let's do something amazingly spiritual uh, and jump in. And we have discovered that we're talking about cardis and being cards. But, but that is me saying it in a Northern Irish accent. So when I say being a card or having cardis, can you translate? Coward, coward, coward. cowardice. Cardis says Emma's phonetic spelling cardis. Cardis and, card and, and a spirit. Wrong. So when, when I deliver you in a minute of the spirit of Cardis, it's not like card playing games, like, like gambling playing games. It's actually like lacking courage, like Cardis. Just so we, oh. <laughs> just so we know, we discovered that my Ulster accent is, so, so you just, as you track Cardis and Cardliness, it, it's a little bit like when I say oil, or power, or or power, yeah. but I, you know the the bird that's head rotates. O W L. Oh, owl, an yeah, owl. 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 Yeah. It's like a yeah. syllable owl. I didn't know what you were saying. We've got <laughs> cowardice. You've got cardis. Cardis. Owl, two syllables. You've got one. Or par. Power. Two syllables. You've got one. You miss a syllable. I don't know where it goes, but it's great. I, we love it. I don't. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. That must be. The Irish talk fast. Maybe the Irish have dropped lots of syllables. I'd not really thought about it. Anyway, you're all going to get free of cardis. Mm. And, uh, you know, uh, if you're addicted to card playing games, you might get free of that as well. <laughs> so, so let's jump in. <laughs> let's jump in. Right. Let me recap the season. 
and where we are in the season. And then we'll jump in around this. Uh, so if you want to share with your friends a 10 minute recap of the season, here mm -hmm. it is. Uh, and David may, or, or Karis may need to pick these next 10 minutes out so that, you, because there's a lot of broadcasting and a lot of hours that we speak, uh, but here is my summation of, this, of the season in 10 minutes. And then we'll move on to why we cannot be cards anymore. Uh, you'd better keep that word on the screen the whole time, David. That okay. was better. <laughs> was that better? Cards? It was. Yeah. <laughs> right. Here we go. It is a time of the power of God returning to the church. That is the major headline of the moment. And that that is going to come in power encounters. And those par encounters are going to have us on the floor where we are finding ourselves released from captivity and liberated by God. Because the power of God is given for the release of the captives. The power of God is not given for domination. It is not given for empire spirit. It is not given for lording it over people. The power of God is is given for liberation and freedom. And so he gives us prophecy and he gives us healing and he gives us exorcism and deliverance. Why? Because we use those tools to get people free. And prophecy and healing and deliverance are all about manifestations of the power of God. And I think in this season, we have to know this, that the church has spent years looking at the world to come to its aid. Mm. And we looked at the world, you know, make righteous laws or get the right person in government or, you know, uh, or, or Hollywood, you be nice to us and you tell nice stories or the Justice Department, you legislate, you know, according to the kingdom. And we look to the world to come to the aid of the church. And yeah. that has meant that we lost an understanding of the power of God for multiple generations because we have looked to the world to come to our aid as a standard worldview. Yep. And so what that means is that in Toronto, hallelujah for Toronto, we had um, uh, uh, the, uh, the resurrection of the truth that God was a father. And then in Bethel, we had the resurrection of the truth of the goodness of God. But in this post-charismatic, post-Pentecostal world, we are coming into the resurrection of the truth of his power like never before. And that is going to be a power that comes in vulnerability. And so mm. to acquire or to work with the power of God or power encounters, I am happy with us using the word power encounters, because if you just use power on its own, it can conjure up all sorts of weird and wonderful unhinged ideas. I'm going to be yeah. powerful. No, you're going to come into power encounters for the purpose of liberation. And, and that is how we must think about it. You are going to have power encounters. You are going to meet the power of God. You are going to be one who knows freedom and knows how to get other people free. That is the dominant thrust of what God is doing over the next few years. And that is at the top line summation of the season. Now, Power is going to come in vulnerability. And remember last week's par hour, God was talking about his power coming uh, in the measure we are vulnerable to each other, that he will not let power encounters come to the church where we're not open, vulnerable, sharing, yielded, submissive, and in good communication with each other. Because if God sends power and we are uh, just islands of independence, we will misuse that power, which is how we became an empire spirit orientated people, okay? But God is saying power encounters for the purpose of liberation will come in vulnerability. Now, that is a massive portion of what we will be working on together for years. All right. Summating the season. The next thing I would say you need to know about this season is that we have 
lost purity and we have lost truth. And so God is calling us to be bold truth tellers. He's calling us into a level of purity around the standard of his truth, the standard of his word. And so we have forgotten that God is righteous. Are you hearing this? We have forgotten that God is righteous. We have yeah. been so obsessed with his, his, his love and his goodness that we have forgotten that he is also fiercely righteous. Mm -hmm. And in righteousness, he says, look, I will not tolerate your sin. My yeah. righteousness will not just be like cheap grace. My righteousness means that there must be a standard of truth that you come into, that you talk about, that you live by. And so as much as we're having power encounters, we're also having truth and purity uh, encounters and that sense of coming up to the standard of the word of God. And I would use the phrase power encounter, but I would also use the phrase beautifully intolerant. The church is going to be power rich in power encounters and liberation, but it's also going to be rich in a beautiful intolerance of the culture of the age. A beautiful intolerance. And we, we don't want to be intolerant in terms of being aggressive and rude, but we're going to find a beautiful intolerance to the spirit of the age and the standard of the world. And so we are going to start to see the wrath of God. Now, this is not particularly a yay moment, mm -hmm. but in that rule of the righteousness of God in this season. We are in the New Testament and we are in the book of Romans. And Romans 12 verse 19, it quotes a concept in Deuteronomy. And that concept in Deuteronomy says this, vengeance is mine. And so in the New Testament, we see it echo, vengeance is mine. But just before Paul quotes Deuteronomy, he says this, leave room for the wrath of God. Mm -hmm. Leave room for the wrath of God. Paul in the New Testament saying there must be a space for the wrath of God. That's a terrifying mm -hmm. thought, isn't it? Because I think there is nothing more politically incorrect these days yeah. Yeah. than talking about the wrath of God. I mean, it's the one thing that alienates you when you talk about the wrath of God, but leave, leave room. So when we talk about, I'm going fast to make this season, when we talk about this rule of the righteousness of God, we have got to leave space for an understanding of his wrath. Now, if you cannot get that, if you refuse to see that as a New Testament principle, you will struggle with the shaking, with some of the wars, with the famines, with the destruction that, that is going to happen to some nations. You will, you will think that God is somehow lost his goodness or lost his kindness, and you will struggle with the end time shaking. If you do not understand that the New Testament tells us to leave or make space for his wrath, leave room for God's wrath, all right? And so God is saying, look, you do liberation and freedom, you do power encounters, you come up to speak my truth again, you come up to a level of purity, and I will reinstate the rule of my righteousness. So you're gonna see those three areas, you're gonna have power encounters, you're gonna be pushed by God to speak the truth, and to stand in truth and to live by biblical truth afresh. That means conversations of sin have got to come back into the body of Christ. You mm. can't live in truth and purity unless you talk about sin. And we have yeah. stopped having sin conversations. So power encounters, purity and truth, and then the rule of the righteousness of God, which leaves space for his wrath 
in the nations. So that is as 10 minutes as I can get a, as, as a summation of the era that we are in. And so it is the greatness of revival of the power of God, but also the shaking of the nations, but also the ending of the places where you and I are nominal. Hmm. Okay, who now? You can understand on the back of that why we then need to deal with cardliness, cardis in the people, C-O-W-A-R-D, being a card, all right? Because you cannot walk into the era of power encounters and speaking the truth and purity if you have cardly retreat type tendencies. That's why we're on it today. Okay, Nate. You had a word, or actually, Sarah Jane, do you want to comment on that first? And then, Nate, can you bring your word about the rooms of power in heaven? Yeah. Whew. Sarah Jane. Brilliant summation, Emma. Gosh, that's like weeks of, of words, isn't it? And weeks of revelation in 10 minutes. We really have to hear it. We really have to grab it. We really have to understand that power comes from vulnerability. God is yeah. speaking very strongly. Collaboration, not individualism. And that sense of actually collaboration with one another comes from vulnerability as well as being vulnerable and yielded to God. And so I think if you had any a sense of what is my priority as an individual hearing that Emma I would say yeah. our job if you will or our purpose right now as individuals in the church together and separately is to say I am yielded to you I am serving you one another I am bearing your burdens I am loving you with my vulnerability and openness and I am yielded and submitted to yeah. God because we will not get into the fullness of the power church era if we will not collaborate with one another. Yes. There are yeah. too many walls, too many limitations that we've put around ourselves, um, including denominationalism, but not specifically that. I think individually, even in our local church context, we have too many walls around us. There's that yeah. sense of actually listen to the word of the Lord at this time and make ourselves vulnerable and be ready to collaborate. I would say that is one of those words. Actually, God woke me up with that word yesterday, collaboration and reparation. But we yeah. won't go into that right now. But that sense of the collaboration comes from vulnerability so that we manifest the power of God. And so I think, yeah, we have to do business with that individually and corporately. Yeah. Yes, yes. Now, in the comments, uh, I think Heather Springer uh, wise, you're saying God's wrath isn't the same as our wrath. That is really important. When we say or when we read that verse in Romans, I think it is a verse that you and I um, uh, go and read it. Romans uh, uh, 12, verse 19, go and meditate on it where it says make room or leave space for the wrath of God. That is not an unhinged rage like you and I might have a tendency in sin to go into. This, the wrath of God is much more about consequences. The wrath of God is much more about nations and people reaping and sowing. And how I like to, to, to describe, now we're in the wrath of God, I didn't really want to go here, but I think it's helpful. How I like to describe it is you and I live under common grace, don't we? That's a nod. Yes, we live under common grace. And common grace covers the whole world. Theologians talk about concepts of common grace. There's actually a sense of just the good of God around the place. Mm -hmm. And sometimes God lifts his hand and he lifts that common grace away from a people. And what happens then is when God just takes a little bit of a step back or he lifts his hand, it's not that he suddenly throws lightning bolts and, and hailstones into those people, but he slightly lifts his hand away. And what they do is they then come into reaping and sowing the consequences of their sins. And I think David and I are happy with that as a useful demonstration or, 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 or um, um, a definition of the wrath of God, that it is very often just a hand of God lifted away, common grace coming off a situation or off a nation, and you live in the consequences of uh, reaping and sowing your sin. So uh, use that thought as you mull over nations who are coming into a place where space is made 
for the wrath of God. Now, Nate, you had a powerful vision about a room of power, uh, uh, but it was a room of celebration because the power of God is worth celebrating, that there are rooms, rooms in heaven of God's power that are sitting vacant that we are not accessing. Can you bring us that word? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was taken in the heavenly and the room of celebrations of the power of God. And within that moment, I was like, you know, what is this, Lord? And he said, it isn't so busy right now because Christians have become distracted. They have been so distracted on meeting the physical need that they have missed the need for the spiritual needs, for their spiritual needs. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say within that, don't you know that I am the creator, the alpha and omega, the beginning and the end? I am that I am. I am the answer for mental health. I am the answer to cancer. I am the answer to circumstances. I am the answer for inner healing. I am the answer to the world. Come on. And he said, I break strongholds. I break bondage. I break cycles. I break depression. And he went on to say, why have you lost focus on knowing the wholeness of me? In me, every sickness has to move and to be healed. Every circumstance has to change. Every demon has to flee. You have lost the mystical sight of me and experience of my glory. Yeah. To know that, to know, to know that you know. That, that true confidence of knowing I am in you and I will manifest in and through you no matter where you walk into every situation. Just like a child believes their parent can fix anything you have lost in, the, in their perspective because you have grown into an ungraceful adult in the spirit. Wow. 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 I am calling you back to a childlike belief. That no matter matter the circumstance or the situation, you will expect my mysticalness to manifest. Yes. And and I, I have a repentance prayer, but within that, just to unpack a little bit, it's that place of walking into situations and expecting his mysticalness that we've almost um, belittled as even Emma was talking about the power of God and just how we've let the world say that they'll take care of this situation and the, you know, different yeah. courts and yeah. different governments will take care of this. But actually the answer for the world is God, is King Jesus. And within that, we have to get back to that place of the mysticalness, that mysteries of God. God, of knowing that God is all powerful, not just knowing it, but actually letting it manifest in every situation, every circumstance. And even with that, it's it's that place that, you know, after this repentance, it's that place as you are, you are with me, you will see this room fill with people in celebration. And it's that place that we say, okay, God, I, I throw out all of these things so that I can align with you right. so that I actually know, not just know, but I feel it. I anticipate it. I, I expect your glory to flow through me, to manifest. Yeah. And I have a repentance prayer. I don't know if you guys want to jump in before we do this. but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's what you're saying Nate, is spot on. The expectation of the power of God to flow through us that we've got to come back to. I think you need to type that in the comments. I expect the power of God to flow through me. Come on, let's write it together. I expect the power of God to flow through me. I expect the power of God to flow through me, which is really what you're saying. We, we need to make those, th- those decrees over ourselves. Now, that means you have an action. Oh, come on, people watching. It means you have an action. It means you've got to now say, you see that thing? I think that's a demon. I'm going to get that out of you. You see that sickness? I believe that my hand laid on you will be able to release through Jesus a healing. I believe that God has a word. It's called prophecy for you, and I'm going to deliver that. And the church can no longer sit in training camps. You can no longer just keep going to training schools. You cannot just say, I'll sign up for another class. You must not be the people who want to just be in education of your theology. You must be the practitioners of your theology. And so I want you to type that now. I am a 
practitioner of the power of God. Yes, I expect it to flow yes. through me, but I mm -hmm. am a practitioner of the power of God. I am a practitioner of the power of God. Come on. That's what we need to be typing. So it is that sense of God saying, I actually wrote it. Oh my, I think we are done. I mean, training camps have a purpose, clearly boot camps, military yeah. camps in the kingdom of God. But if you have gone to three or four training camps or training schools or tra read training books and you have not become a, a, a practitioner, you must repent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, lead us in repentance. Yes, yes, yes. You just repeat after me. I repent for growing into an ungraceful adult. Whew. I repent for being distracted and picking up a humanistic perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Father, I ask you to remove any doubt or confusion that would degrade who you are. Mm hmm. Fill me with your majestic sight and expectation of your fullness in Jesus' name. And so, Father, I just pray over every person that even prayed this prayer, Father, that they, that they are relieved of this humanistic perspective, that they are relieved of not expecting your majestic, your mysteries of who you are, God, that every place that they go, every moment that they go, they don't just read about these things. But, Father, there is a grace and there is your glory that is flowing right now. That is your power. And so it is time that we step out in the newness everywhere we go, everything that we do. In fact, we should go into places that would not necessarily seem to be what, what, what the world would say to go to, but because we know that your glory is flowing in and through us. And Come Father, on, we just speak this over each and every person right now, Father. Yeah, oh, very God. good, Nate. Whew, the you glory know, of God is all over that, Nate. That is called bringing it. Huh. I, I, I have just a tad bit more to add, if that's oh, all right. Keep there. going, yes. Yeah, and, and just to finish that off, with that, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, as you have got rid of these distractions, I am feeling you with my, with my supernatural perspective and glory. You have felt like you have been pushed forward, but every time you do, you hit a wall that pushes you back. But yeah. today, I am pushing you through that wall, the wall of doubt, the wall of false perspectives, the wall of misguided denominations and doctrines. Come on. No longer are you going to be second best or another option. You are the answer because you are me in the flesh. Oh, come on. You are the answer because you are me in the flesh. Oh, and as as you receive him as as being him in the flesh we will see this room of celebration of power be filled be filled because we're going to be able to manifest every moment because we're actually walking out and understanding that we are him in the flesh right now oh, wow that's a, that's a word you just need to breathe that in. I am Jesus. You know, I am his power. I am his hands. I am his feet. I am his sound. I am his voice. I am his image bearer. Christ is being formed in me. Mm. Ma'am. Sarah Jane, you have quite a word about the sin of silence at this time. Uh, so can you just take us there, what God is saying about the sin of silence in the church? Wow. Um, yeah, I think um, a segue into that from what Nate was just praying um, connects with the sin of silence, actually, is the Lord showing me as you're praying there, Nate, our connection as church with the sin of Sodom. What is the sin of Sodom? What is the sin of Sodom? Ezekiel 16, 48, 50. And this relates to the sin of silence. It says, um, God speaking, uh, as surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, your sister Sodom and her daughters never did what you and your daughters have done. He's saying the sin of Israel is worse than Sodom. Now, this was what the sin of your sister Sodom was. She and her daughters were arrogant, Ooh. overfed. 
and unconcerned. They did not help the poor and needy. They were overfed and unconcerned. So talking about feed me, feed me, feed me, not having concern and feeling proud, being the adult, like you said, rather than hum humble and, and being led by God in a childlike yeah. way. But in this, Sodom even were haughty and did detestable things. But the haughtiness almost is the silence of, I know better, the yep. silence is arrogant, this sin of silence, of not speaking, is something that we have to contend for. Because how yeah. often have we kept our mouths shut when we should yeah. be speaking from a place of understanding, yeah. because we yeah. have the understanding, or speaking from a place of even righteous anger or righteous yeah. um, frustration over the situations that we are facing as individuals in the church and that we see in the world. For example, how many of us are speaking out against injustices that we're seeing in our own cities and towns? How many of us are using our voices to put into practice the things that we are learning? Yes, all the miraculous power stuff that, that Nate is brilliantly prophesying about, but actually yeah. even the using the voice for intervention. Yeah. Yeah. There was a man in Britain called Thomas Moore who, who was around when Henry VIII was on the throne and he was put um, under trial for not acknowledging Henry's um, leadership or authority over the church in England. And we are now reaping a lot of that and God is unveiling a lot of that right now. But he yeah. said this in Latin. He said, Ketacet consentiri, which means silence is consent. Very silence good. is consent. And so well, how many times are we speaking uh, with our silence? Because your silence is saying something when your words are not. Our silence is filling the void when our words are not. And it's so important to recognize that the Lord is not just anointing your voice. He is breaking us out of our prisons of silence. Come and on. do you feel that? There is this sense yes. of actually almost like a prisoner of war camp that we have locked ourselves into. Nobody else has done it. We have chosen the path of silence. We've been silent when we should be uh, speaking out and intervening on behalf of the, the needy, the poor, the orphan, the widow, when we should be intervening on things that we have seen of injustices, not just things that we're seeing in the news, but actually things that we're watching in our own communities, our children's communities and friend groups, yeah. and even in the communities in which we live. We have been yeah. silent and we have locked ourselves in. And now is the time actually to break agreement with that. We've been overfed, we've been arrogant, and we've been unconcerned. And we have been in the sin of Sodom, which we can read about in Ezekiel 16. This is a shameful time, actually, and a place where we should be rightfully ashamed as the church, uh, Emma and Nate, I feel. And the Lord's yeah. been really convicting me on that sin. And as you said it, as you said those words and prophesied, I began to see the weight of that sin of Sodom all around us where we have been silent. Lord, wow. I'm that's, a, that's amazing. It's sobering, isn't it? Because it's not just this little sin of silence. It's scripturally linked to the sin of Sodom. Mm. That, that, it, that's shocking. I, the, I felt the Lord say this to me. You have been so concerned that you would speak and demons would attack you. Who knows? They've been there. You've been so concerned that you would speak and demons would attack you, you forgot that when you speak, demons tremble. Mm. And the Lord is just grabbing us. And I think he's lightning striking our brains and saying, you've got it the wrong way round. You are not the tail that when you speak, you get attacked. You are the head that when you speak, demons tremble. Yeah. And of course, we're in this culture, uh, uh, cancel culture time. And that we, we know it, but that cancel culture is, look, if you have a differing opinion, you need to be shut down. It's about canceling anyone that holds an opinion that is opposite to the zeitgeist or the spirit of the age. Uh, you are canceled if you don't fit in. And we can smell Satan all over that. Mm. And Satan is intimidating and Satan is 
threatening. If you speak, I will make sure you are ostracized. We are in a day of the extreme play of the enemy's hand. And why is the enemy needing to institute a cancel culture movement? Oh, you need to hear this. Because the enemy is scared of the power of truth. The enemy is scared of the power of truth. And spiritual warfare sometimes is not, I need to go to a training camp and I need to hide away and learn about the tears and the levels of the demons. And I need to learn about strategic spiritual warfare. And I need to make sure that I'm safe and I've got a mandate when I, you know, I'm warfaring in my private bedroom space in intercession about the powers of darkness. No, 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 no. Spiritual warfare is speaking truth. You want to be a spiritual warfare expert, learn to speak truth. And of course, the church is saying, uh, sorry, the world is saying, oh, you can't do this and you shouldn't say that. And that's not really a modern set of beliefs. And it's spoken to Christians all of the time. And the enemy is terrified that you might speak truth and he's terrified that it might catch on and that many people might start to speak it. And you are to bring up truth as a warrior, not because you're unloving, not because you're a bigot, not because you're difficult, but because you love people. Truth and speaking truth is the ultimate act of love. Not of contention and irritation and argumentative Yes. Truth is, speak, is, is speaking truth is an ultimate act of love because truth is freedom and truth is liberation. And can I say this, and this is extreme, but people are literally dying, waiting for the church to use their voice. They are literally dying and real care of a nation equals real truth. We should fear God more than we fear the rejection of man. Did you hear that? We should fear God more than we fear the rejection of man. And your tongue is a holy fire and there is an anointing of holy fire to come to your tongue. And you might feel baited or argumentative in a conversation, but your choice to speak is seeding the truth all the time. <sighs> And the Lord says this, you need to ask for mercy for your cardis. David, can you spell that on the screen? Because my Irish accent is problematic. You need to repent and ask for mercy for your cardis. It is not just that you have a need of courage, but that you are indwelt by demons of cardliness. What a word over the church. And it's not just, oh God, make me bold, make me bold, make me brave, make me brave, make me grave. And those prayers almost ricocheting off us because we have indwelling spirits of cardliness and cardis. And cardliness says this, uh, I, I will not, I don't have the ability to endure unpleasant things. That's why it's not fear. It's different from fear. It's cardliness. It's I don't have the ability to endure unpleasant things. It's I'm excessively worried about pain or danger. That's cardliness. And a church who has a partnership with cardliness is impotent because you have to endure unpleasant things. And you will have to go into dangerous places and there will be some pain. And I don't think we talk about this demon enough. And you have got to get free of the demon of cardliness. You've got to spit it out. And uh, Nate and uh, Sergeant, I'm going to get you to come in. The problem is this. 
we have mixed up biblical concepts of abundance, John 10, 10, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. And we have almost replaced that word with the word comfort. I came to give you life and, and a more comfortable life. That is not what it says. And there is this love of comfort that makes you cowardly, cowardly. And the love of comfort is undoing the church comfort is never promised by god and comfort should never be expected that abundance is an abundance of ease in relationship to christ abundance is an abundance of authority in jesus name abundance is a security of eternity abundant life with christ forever abundance is about the stature of your relationship with jesus abundance is not soft easy comfortable cushions so when you contend for abundant life, you are not contending for wealth or comfort. When you contend for abundant life, you are contending for an increase of authority in connection with Christ. Mm. And liberation and freedom. And so when you misunderstand abundance and comfort, you walk a line into cardly, cardless behavior where you lack the ability to endure unpleasant things, which shuts you down from truth telling. And when you do not speak the truth, you cannot love people properly. And when you do not speak the truth, you cannot have demons tremble. And when you do not speak the truth, you are not a spiritual warfare expert. Hmm. It's that's strong stuff, isn't it? Who, Nate, Sarah Jane, yeah. take some time and comment on that, and then we're going to kick some demons out. It's it's that moment, really, with we have let ourselves let the enemy disguise cowardice with wisdom, and we try to claim cowardice is wisdom. In everything we do, we're like, oh, I'm not going to do that because this, this, and this, and this. And you have a list and you're like, well, that's wisdom tells me not to do this. But actually, we've let the enemy lie to us and yes. walk in a place of cowardice instead of the true wisdom that actually comes from the word of God. Yes. Sarah Jane. Oh, I can see you're in the spirit realm. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just like, I don't know where to go first because I feel like there's so much in that, Emma, that yeah. um, I just feel, you know, it's almost like the revelation of what we've been doing as church and the Lord saying in that, even again, layering what we've said already, that you don't need, we don't need another conference, church. You don't need another conference. And it's like the enemy has been uh, circling us around in our local church context, the conference, back around, back around, not having the impact that we have. Yes, the occasional mission. And I'm not saying missions aren't impacting. They are. But let me feel this as you're saying the revelation, Emma, is we God is saying to us, and I heard him say, you have been playing at being church. And yes. there is this sense of actually how, I mean, you could we. You could weep at the same time as thank you, Jesus, that you're getting us out of this circuit that we've been in. And actually yeah. abundant life means transformation for the many, transformation for the poor and needy, transformation for the oppressed. And actually we need to be the ones who are willing to put ourselves out there to be naked before men, if you will, and God and say, I am willing to actually make a fool of myself for you, God, and speak the truth and be the one who brings the truth. And so, you know, how many of us out there felt stuck in cycles of, is this all there is to Christian life? Yeah. No, we've been playing at church and God is challenging us right now to be the uh, fullness of what he uh, modeled as Christ modeled, the fullness of what Christ modeled when he was on the earth. And I just feel more and more convicted that he's peeling layers and layers of things that we've believed, as you say, yes. Nate, is wisdom. And this is the way that we live Christian life. But actually, you know, he's saying, no, haha, -ha, be revealed, Ecclesia. This is what you're supposed to yes. be doing. Oh, I, you know, it's just, I feel like, I feel like God's grace is amazing. But at the same time of, oh, Lord, how far we have fallen. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I felt like the Lord said this about the demon uh, of Cardis. I felt the Lord say this. Um, when you get delivered of Cardis and Cardliness, many of you will get physically healed. And I heard the Lord say this, the Cardis demon, David, spell it on the screen, I know, uh, because only the Ulster people understand me. The Cardis demon has brought physical limitations. And I heard the Lord say that pain and containment in the physical frame and shutting down of even some body organs that should work are because you partnered with cardliness and comfort and you have even been those who have stepped into generational curses of cardliness that it has been a building issue down generational lines of the church do you remember i said that this um, that we, we at the beginning we lost the understanding of the power of God and we lost it for generations. Mm -hmm. That's why this is the era of the par church. It's why we called our church par church because of that revelation. So you got to expect some amazing things. Who wants to? We'll we'll lead them in a prayer of repentance for for Cardis, somebody who can pronounce the word. And uh, then we'll pull that demon out and, and then we'll release healing on the back of that. Sarah Jane, do you want to do the repentance? And uh, uh, then we'll pull the demon out and then Nate, you can release the, the healing on the back that came from the shutting down of cardliness. Go for it, SJ. Great. Okay, everyone, let's just do the repentance. So repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I repent for I every repent. way. For every way. Known and unknown. Known and unknown. That I've partnered with this demon of cowardice. That I've partnered with this demon of cowardice. Lord, I ask for your mercy as I'm convicted. I ask for your mercy as I'm convicted. Of my silence and my retreat. Of my silence and my retreat. I choose now. I choose now. To break agreement with the demon of cowardice. To break agreement with the demon of cowardice. And my silence and my retreat. And my silence and my retreat. Whew. Wow, 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 wow. Now, if you prayed that, you've loosened that demon and it has no permission any longer to be an indwelling spirit. <laughs> Let's get rid of it. Now, work with me, guys, because this is mass deliverance. Spirit, if we've not done this with me before, because we've done a lot of this. Spirits are spirit, breath, wind, spirit. So how do they come out? On the breath, on the wind, like that, okay? So you will either yawn, blow, cough, whatever you need to do to expel that spirit of Cardis. Let's pull the mic. Shinea Nasolia Maso. In the name of Jesus, wherever you're watching, either live or on the uh, catch up, I speak to the spirit of cardis and cardliness on the inside of you. I grab it across the airwaves and I start to pull in the name of Jesus that thing up and out of you on your breath. And I say, you may not indwell these dear ones anymore in Jesus' name. Now we take a big deep breath and out that demon comes on the breath in Jesus name yawning is great let it go let it go Whoa, all of it out. Where it has been in your generational line, we love family trees, but we cut that generational curse from you. And where your parents and your forebears, your forefathers could never be the fullness that they were called to be of bold truth tellers, of where they lost their radical cutting edge, where you have a history of retreat rather than cutting edge pioneers in your family because Cardis started to own them 
them. We cut that curse from coming down to you in the name of Jesus it goes. And we repent for the ancestral sin, Father God. And we say we are new creations in Christ who can pick up the courage and the boldness of truth telling. Mm. Keep blowing I keep yawning. Some of you just give it time to be unseated from your life in Jesus' name. Ooh, I love deliverance. Do you want to pray anything else, Sarah Jane, before? Yeah, Nadia? just put your hand on your voice box right now. So in the name of Jesus, we break every structure of cowardice from off your voice, from off your voice box, from around your thinking associated with speaking. We disconnect that structure of cowardice that it's framed itself around your thinking and your speaking. And we uh, deconstruct it with our prayers right now. We break agreement. For some of you, you might feel like you've got a tickle in your throat or something stuck. You need to cough. You can force a wee cough <laughs> like that. It will come out easier. And I'm just seeing almost like that structure of cowardice of almost like programming, if you will, that we've partnered with the, de the demonic that God is breaking us out of. So in the name of Jesus, we agree and you agree with me. I am breaking out of that structure of cowardice. I am breaking my body out of the limitations of cowardice. I am stepping out and almost smashing it. It looks like a scaffolding kind of structure around us in the spirit. So break yourself out of that. You may need to actually physically get your arms and elbows going and just prophetically pull it out where you're feeling it connected to your body. Some of you feeling it connected in your stomach. Some of you feeling it connected in your back. Just go there. I am unhooking myself from the demonic structure of cowardice. I am taking myself out of it and I will not partner with it anymore in Jesus' name. Oh. Emma, you're muted. If funny noises are coming out of you, that is fine because um, uh, the demons made noises when Jesus pulled them out. Mm -hmm. So they're likely to make noises when we pull them out. That's just how it is. Now, remember I said that I felt that the, the demon of Cardis had brought physical sickness and limitation. So we want to release uh, healing. If you get healed right now and free, can you email in our help desk the testimonies of healing? We want the testimonies of healing that are about to come. Expect to be physically healed. And then you'll know, oh my, that sickness was because the indwelling spirit of cardliness had shut my system down. Go for it, Nate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you will, just wherever you're at, just begin to just stand up. And even as we were praying this, I've seen um, chest cavities begin to shift and move. And specifically, your heart, there's there's a healing for heart right now of this place of, of this cowardice being shifted away. And he says, I'm giving you a heart of courage. And as you have received the glory of God right now, you will bring healing to hearts. These pacemakers will be removed that um, even... Um, the different vertebra, uh, different um, organs that, that's pumping through back and forth will be healed and be magnificently um, separated in the fullness. And I just seen even those chest cavities as we were praying just begin to shift and move. And so by standing up, even if it's not heart, we just release your complete healing, healing over healing. every person right healing. now, Father. God, Come from on, heart, healing. God, the flows, the blood, God, to even um, brain, God, the alignment of their brain right now, Father. We know that you are the healing, healing. God. And Father, we have rebuked and removed the spirit of cowardice, Father. And so, Father, we just release your fullness over every person that is watching right now. Every person right now. As you're giving them hearts of courage, Father, you're bringing healing every bit because every bit of their body is Come attached on. to this heart, which brings your fullness of your blood that is flowing through their heart, that flows through every inch of their body. And so we release this completeness over each and every one of them, Father. Not for just to be able to pat somebody on the back, but God to bring you glory, Father. And we celebrate every person that is being healed right now and even the people that will be watching this in the future because, Lord, you are the King of kings, Father. And we just declare this right now. Father, and I just say right now, just begin to release your angels, God, that, that just needs some physical, um, just uh, maintaining a, a place of, of just stirring them, God, in this moment, just a few more moments and minutes, God, that even there's going to be people that are watching that are just stewarding this place place of your glory, yeah. God. And as your ministry and angels begin to just love on them, shift them, Father, in a place of your encounter of this power, God, that you're releasing right now over them, Father. Release these angels that just steward and shift them, Father. In your name we pray. Amen.
Wow, um, wow, wow, that was powerful, Nate. Well done, excellent. Yeah. You can feel the healing uh, surging through bodies. So can you do me a favor, guys? Our hours come to an end. Of course, you'll catch us. Oh, my dad is preaching on Sunday morning at mm -hmm. Par Church. I know there's tens of thousands of you watching Par Church on the catch up. So don't miss uh, Par Church uh, with my dad. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, remember that you can join our alliance. You can join the Global Prophetic Alliance. And when you, I know an, a lot of you are already members, but when you join, go to the website, join the Global Prophetic Alliance. When you join that, you get into private Thursday night training. And Thursday night, every Thursday night, those who are part of our network, the Global Prophetic Alliance, we train you. I, uh, uh, my dad actually was training last week. And uh, we train you in um, supernatural ministry and what you need to know every Thursday night. And you get to practice. It's remarkable. And you join the family of the Global Prophetic Alliance. So make sure you don't miss joining the network so that you can access our prayers more and be uh, part of our experience extended family david has got it on the stream join our network okay and um we are back uh, next week and uh, make sure that you share this because of that 10 minutes where uh, i summated the se the season make sure you type as you share you friends you need to hear this summation prophetic summation of the season and uh, we will see you oh i'm on with uh, the girls tomorrow i'm on um tomorrow Very with well. warrior woman so warrior woman tomorrow sarah jane's back with world prayer watch on friday dad's preaching at par church and then par our man you're you're not going to be short of finding us are you <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of white pit okay we love you all i'm way to sunbathe and work <laughs> at the same time let's see how that goes <laughs> bye